Paul Chase, I'm going to run you through Cheetobox slicing parts for an SLA 3D printer. First thing, when you open Cheetobox, we're using 1.8.1 now. Hopefully this holds up for later versions. First thing is go into the settings and make sure you print out the printer you're using. At Nova Labs, our choices are the Frozen Sonic XL 4K and the Frozen Sonic Mini 4K. I've got an L Mars in the other room myself. Also look at what resin you're going to use. So far we're using the Aqua Gray uh, ABS-like resin. In terms of settings here, you have your machine settings, the print, this is the exposure times, so if you're using a new resin, you'd be modifying the exposure times, you can experiment that later. G-code is the command sent to start the print and to change through the layers. None of this needs to be edited unless for the print settings you're adding new resins. Along the top you have model manipulation, so you can add a model. I'm going to play with the cat stretching. You can save your build plate, or rather save the project, which will save your part, any support material you've added, and anything you've uh, modified the part with. You can actually record, you can record built into this. Add more, automatically layout. If we center them, you'll notice the red parts here. These two models will not fit. The hollow can be used to take holes in the model. This is if you're using a solid thing. For this model, it's not really a huge thing, but to see how that works is that's generally a resin saving procedure. The hollow is a bit more advanced and I'd sort of steer clear of it. You never really need to do it, but you can see it's making this model nice hollow tubules. If you print it as is right now, you will not be saving any resin. What you'll be doing is having a hard shell with liquid resin on the inside, which will cure a bit, but in general you can't cure through solid material. If you add some holes, you can make holes in your model so that the resin can drain out. So these are holes that are actually going right through your model. I usually use one and a half to two millimeter holes. You also have full undo features on this. So I can undo and now my model is solid again. Then moving, rotating, scaling it just like any 3D flicer. This is, keep in mind, upside down. This is how your model is going to look like while printing. But most people a bit easier to think of support from the bottom. I'm going to scale this down a bit. If you're doing multiple files, like if I needed three of these cats, I can add and even auto lay them out. Printing one cat will take exactly the same time as printing three or four cats because you're curing it one layer at a time. So support material, you can only support one model at a time. What I generally do is automatically add supports from the platform, build up a layer very quickly. The different settings here tell you what does the top of the part look like, top of the support tree, what does the middle look like, how thick is the column, what does the bottom look like, the attachment to the platform. Generally I want one big continuous bottom. With this model you're getting that great. With not, you can add a skateboard wrap and that puts this large outline around the entire that's basically to make it easier to remove the build plate. You see this big angle there, so you can just easily get the scraper under there and start prying it off. Yeah. Problems with this part, this support inside the Voroni cat is going to be pretty hard to remove, but it looks like it has enough supports as it is. And I like the fairly thick attachment so that I make sure that my model doesn't come loose. I'm going to use the delete support tool and remove that support. Anything else looks good? If you want to add support, look at this guy. You can also edit supports. The adding support is nice and interactive. I feel like maybe some more supports on the foot would be good. If you look from underneath, it helpfully gets them out of the way. You can also see the color coding of the red unsupported bits. Now, you're only seeing the tips here. So you can sort of add from the side. If you do a bunch of tall supports, it will automatically support the supports, which I think is just cool. You can also remove all supports, hide the supports so it's easier to add to the model. Auto Hider does that well. And also looking down through and seeing where recommended attachment points are. When you're happy with your supports, you can copy them to new models. I'm just going to delete these other cats. The support lives with the model. If I wanted to do multiple of these, I would use the same support structure. And you can also generate different supports for different models if you like. But once you got that going, slice. Now you have the view of your model, and you have a preview of each layer. 
So we pretty much want to check the first layer, make sure it's nice, flat, and solid. Kind of cool to scroll up through. Please note the price so that you can pay for the resin used. For something small, it's you know, it's not going to run. Also note the time. The time on these is actually extremely accurate. Um, we're curing for specific to layer times. The only thing that's not really calculated is the layer lift and set, but yeah, it's well known. For saving, the Mini loves the CTB, G2 box format. And it does take a little while to write. It's writing out a whole bunch of images. If we switch to the Prozen Sonic You'll notice what changed. The build platform is quite a bit larger. When we go back to the slice and save it, we want to use the zip format. It does not like the CD, CDD, DLP. Only zip. And save that. That's all there is to it. Catch you later. Happy printing. Once you're done with the slice, you save it to a USB stick and insert to the left side of the printer. Before we play with the resin, we're going to be clicking on rubber gloves and safety goggles. The resin is toxic irritant to your hands and eyes. First thing to do is to stir the resin using only the plastic scraper. There's a metal scraper for helping you get your part off the build platform, but only the plastic could ever touch the bottom of the build or the bottom of the vat. Add a little resin. If you don't need to add resin, you can get away without the gloves, but we'd really rather you wear them safety-wise. The USB stick stuck on the back. Sorry about the uh, camera angle there. Make sure that the platform is secure, the front is in the front, and then you should be able to find your file using the touchscreen and start the print. As soon as you say start the print, you'll notice the head starting to move down. The lid does not have any sort of registration on it, it just needs to go back on top. Alright, so finishing and cleaning a print. This guy is finished, so you can see that. Made a very tiny cat. Try and record this head style. First thing to do, gloves, of course. So what we're going to do is remove the part, and then we're going to wash and cure it. The scraper is for use to get your parts off the build plate. It is never to be used in the vat. This plastic scraper can be used in the vat, but not to get your parts off the build plate. Metal. Plastic. Metal. Plastic. Got this. Let a little bit drip off. The trick is not to make a mess. This is just a straight up simple green solution. Get in there. Note the front versus the back, there's these three little notches on there. That's why we need to differentiate. No idea what that is. These screws engage with the notches on the back. Slide that back in. We are done with the printer. There's our cat. I shrank it to go really fast to try and demonstrate. Might be a little too small. It cannot fit through the holes in our fling though, so it should be okay. All right, over to the wash and cure station. This guy very importantly clips in there. There is a sensor on the back of this, which is why it's labeled back and front. First thing we're gonna do is wash. Sure, that's good enough. Since we got a small part after all. Go for it, ran out of battery because I left it connected to my phone and it was just sitting there. Oh my goodness. Cat is dead. Cat is kill.
once more starting to clean the print. Gonna be getting your part off the build platform and straight into the vat of um, simple green. Get off your resin. Go through this real quick since we already did it once before. <laughs> Always secure the build platform back on. Once you're using gloves, you can drop it and get in for a wash. You can totally remove supports before the wash, but I like to get it so it's a little less slippery. Again, make sure the back is in the back, or the cure station will not run. The simple green is uh, not as aggressive as alcohol, so it'll generally be a little bit less. So we're going to do a secondary rinse in the water once we're done with this. Then we have our curing plate put on at the very end. Bit of a ballet, and it takes uh, two minutes. I'll certainly cut out the time when we're curing. I'm going to remove this. I'll stick it over here, because we're going to clean on this surface so we don't have any mess. And dunk the whole shebanger in water real quick. Take the big chunks of simple green off. This guy can go back there. Fine. And I like to do the support removal here. A lot of them should be able to snap off. This is still an uncured part, so it's not as strong as it will be when cured. It's generally easier to get this parts, get the supports off before you cure it. But you have to be careful not to damage your part, which is kind of a trick of how much support did you put on there. Problem I should have found, or should have fixed when I was generating supports. This support goes all the way up inside. Not really a good way to remove that. <laughs> well, we'll cure it like that, see if we can get it out later. This resin likes to be cured underwater. So you can normally just throw this away. I'm going to cure it as well to serve as example parts. This can be removed. And put his lid back on. And get set back aside. And you change your mode from wash to cure. And then you go up to six minutes. Start the cure. I'm going to put the camera down so I don't have to sit here for six minutes watching it. For most parts, I'll start with a two minute cure time. See how stiff they are afterwards and make sure there's no surface residue. If it is smooth to the touch, the part is fully cured. Taking my gloves off, take your part out. Once you've done the cure, this should be good solid resin. So let's actually pick a container. So that is the process for slicing, printing, rinsing, and curing your SLA prints. Hope you enjoy. This video will stay up so you can jump back and reference it as needed.